Hi, I'm Alison Pryor and I teach acrylic paintings and drawings for beginners and all levels. And today I'm going to show you how to paint a beautiful husky. Now this is the, the reference photo we're going to use. So the reference photo I put on my canvas and I'm going to show you how to transfer this to your canvas so we can get started painting. So what I did was I printed off a copy of the dog, the husky dog on a piece of paper and it's an eight and a half by 11 so my canvas is about nine by 12 so i made it close to what the size of the canvas was and then what i did was i took carbon paper i want to trace it because it's hard to actually draw it on your canvas but you can draw this freehand on another sheet of paper and then transfer it the same way but what i did was to, so I could see it really well, I use carbon paper, okay? Now carbon paper, you can't erase it, so you make mistakes, it's really gonna be hard for you to fix it. But you can paint over these lines, so that's no problem because it's black anyway, black and white. But the lighter parts where it's light around here, I didn't want to put the carbon paper there. So what I used was, I used my own graphite paper. I made this by just taking a plain piece of paper printer paper and putting my pencil all in the back of this and then I use that and I put that in here the same thing I use a pen and I drew I traced the edges that weren't in the black areas and the tongue and the, the important areas so I could erase it if I made a if I made a mistake so you can see they're lighter but I can erase those if something went wrong okay so use uh, both methods and that way you know you won't get yourself in trouble so we'll just take this off. So I only taped it on, that's all. And then I, I use a pen to transfer it because it, you can push hard on the pen. And this is a board, right? It's not one of those stretch canvases because you, if you're pressing hard, you could go through the stretch canvas. You can do it. But these boards, canvas boards are great because they're nice and sturdy, you know. And uh, you can frame them. And the, then I'm going to show you the colors. It's the reference photo that I found on Pixabay. And um, as you can see, it's all black and white. Some gray, little, looks like a little bit of burnt umber there in the, in the uh, ears. And um, a little bit of blue in the eyes, pink, reddish color on the tongue. And uh, so we'll get started. The colors that I need. These are the colors that I'm using. I'm using uh, black and white and red be any color red any color you have there and blue i got ultramarine blue but you can use whatever you want and a bit of burnt umber or you can use burnt sienna or any brown so that's very limited which is good because there's not a lot of color in the dog so far i just have some small because it's only a small area i have some small flat synthetic brushes chiseled edge and i have a couple of round brushes small round brushes maybe for whiskers or whatever so i'm just going to um Start with those brushes. So I need more, then I'll let you I'd know. I'd like to start with the black areas first. So the black areas, you need a, your small flat brush until we get into the the larger, or the smaller black areas around the eyes. We may need to small, have a smaller brush. So we'll just go with putting it black first. Okay, there we go. Good. Good, good, good. Just keep filling in the black. So you got the chisel edge here, which is good because now you can put up against that line and that line, right? So now you got the chisel edge makes a nice sharp line for you, see? So keep going and putting in all the black area.
layers and as you can see I'm pulling out some of these edges here right you know just to get that furry look as you can see in the picture I'm using the chisel edge my brush to do that so you know you can just put it on plain and then we can work on that after you don't have to do all that right away you just want to get the black on first and worry about that after but I want to do the ears so you want to do the ears and don't forget to go with the direction of the fur okay because when you're coming down to go out you need to go with the direction of the fur and so this fur here is going up this way okay so make sure you look at the direction of the fur and come out over that line a little bit to give it a furry look see like that so use chisel edge to do this if you can all right we have this much done so keep looking at your reference photo okay keep looking at it because you're going to need even though you drew it out you still need to know you know where these little shades of black are going but we can this is just getting us started so as long as we get things in place then we can work on getting everything the way it really should be so we'll just a little bit down here See how, like when I made that mistake, so easy to uh, go into the wrong areas. So now we're going to do the eyes. So we'll do the eyes and the snout and all that good stuff. Just gonna make sure I got a good reference photo. Try and pick the best one I have here. Let's see, see so you can see the eyes there now. And I'm gonna take a small round brush this time. And I'm going to take my black. I reload a lot, okay? So when you're doing these, you might do a few strokes and go back and get more paint, okay? So these here go around the eyes. Use a small brush so you can get into the area. The smaller the area, the smaller the brush. The bigger the area, the bigger the brush. All right. So, get around that eye there. I don't want to go into the eye because... Where you're using black paint, it's, it's not that easy to correct it. I'm going to use my phone for the reference photo now because we got color. I forgot about that. No. Whatever works for you. All right. There we go. Oops, I don't want to go in there. I don't want to go in there. Oh no, gotta have a steady hand. I'll fix it up now when I go back in to lighten that up with the blues and things. So, a little bit up here. Good, other eye. Keep looking at your reference photo. We're just doing the blacks right now. So I, I can see some burnt sienna and burnt umber and all kinds of things going on there. But uh, right now we can just get the main features painted, the blacks and the whites. Well, blacks, I say, because the whites are going to be shadows. And... All right. We're getting there. Good. And we'll do the little dot in the eye. All right. Good. Now with the same brush, we will do the snout. 
so we got really black in here. Right here. And we're going to wipe off our brush and just whatever is left on the brush, put that around here for now. Leave a few little, well, we'll put some highlights on it after. So now I got that there, so I know where it goes. I'm just gonna take the line that I made and I'm going to go around that. There we go, and around. I'm trying to keep a steady hand now. <laughs> right. Trying to leave some highlights there, even though I could do them after, but it, it'll help me put everything in place properly. So, there we go. Keep reloading when you got to, okay? If you don't have enough paint on your brush, it's harder to work with. We'll leave that for now, just like that. I know it doesn't look... Maybe I can put a little bit over here. Not too much. Not sure what I'm going to do either yet. I gotta look closely at what I'm doing and make sure I don't do it wrong. That's not too bad. That's a good start. It's a good start. All right. Now look in the ears. You can see it's kind of a grayish. It looks like burnt umber in the in the very the very darks, doesn't it? Well, let's let's do some burnt umber. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to my burnt umber. Not too much. I want to keep it a bit dark, but like not. Burnt umber is pretty dark, so I want a dark brown. So I'm going to put in some my dark brown. I'm just using the same brush for now. I'm going to scrub that in because we need to... Yeah, that's nice. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more white because it gets a bit light around the edges here. All right. Nice. All right, so we'll just... Just going by the reference photos. I mean, if you were taking pictures of a husky, they're all different colors, shades, and highlights. But I'm just going by this one for now. And, uh, and these are the colors that I see. Maybe you'll see something different. So whatever you see, don't worry about what I'm doing. Whatever you see. If you see a different shade of brown or... As long as you got the values okay, you know, like uh, like the dark in the center there, and then you lightened up a little bit on the edges here and things like that. Just I'm going to add more white to my brush so I can lighten it up. See how I'm lightening up? Now, down here is more of a grayish color. In the ears, it seems to be the brown. Okay, I got too much white. Let's just go back and put some brown on there. I'm after making a couple of mistakes as I'm trying to teach this. I want you to know that this is what happens. You, you just have to do it, make mistakes, fix them up best you can. They can be fixed, they can be adjusted. All right, so don't worry about, unless it's a really drastic, I mean, it could, there are times you can have a drastic, but most of the time you can pretty well. I'm gonna add some white to my brush so I can spread it out a bit. Okay, and that keeps your paint wet too. So you want because you need you need paint to stay wet so you can blend it. And so see where it's starting to dry that fast, and I'm and no more paint on my brush. See, like that. So just go get more paint and get pick up some white with a little bit of your brownish color because you don't want it to be too white. You want still want that brownish color to mix them together and see how much white I put. Lots of paint on. I put lots of paint on my brush as much as I can without. You know, make it too blobby, but these are all the things that you'll get it used to. As if you're a new artist, 
then you'll get used to how much paint to put on your brush and how it feels. It's just like learning to drive a car. When you first learn to drive a car, it's so awkward and nothing feels right. Playing piano, whatever you're doing for the very first time, everything feels weird. But once you get, uh, you do it, the more you do it, then the, the more it comes natural. You know, still hard. <laughs> I've been doing it for many years. It still has a hard time. Right. I still not. To, I know how to use the tools. I know how to mix my paint. I know how to do a lot of things, but trying to get it to come together the way I want it sometimes. It's almost impossible <laughs> to try a few of those. I'm going to use a long liner brush, but you can use a small round brush, whatever you, if, if you can get, you know, those nice swirly here, there. So this is I'm going to add white to my brush. And it looks like they're kind of got a little bit of blue or something in them. So I'm not sure. But let's see, let's see. I'm gonna... That's gray, isn't it? It's more of a gray color. Okay. Well, let's go with the black and white and a little bit of blue. How's that? Black and white and blue. All right. Black and white and blue. Let's see. We want more white than anything, right? So I get a lot of white there. Dragging my brush through it. And a little bit of black. So start with white first. That way you won't have black and then you're trying to add the blues and things to it. And then it just makes a lot of paint, waste of paint, right? So start off with your white. Add a bit of blue, a bit of black, kind of a grayish white. And I'm going to move away from that because it's too blue. And I'm going to add more white, a little more black. I'm going to add it here. I'm kind of mixing my colors. But I'm trying to get the color that I want. So I don't want to keep adding to that one pile. Because I keep adding that one pile. We'll go on all day and we'll use all the paints. And what well, you got to move away. All right. You got to move away. So if you, you can start here. And again, that, start and get that color. But then move over. Because you just keep adding color to that. And it'll be just a waste of paint. So move away and get the color you want. Add a little more white. So... If it's not exactly the same, I'm not going to worry too much. But let's see, let's see. Kind of grayish, isn't it? So let's try get some of those nice. All right, so you need a, a, a nice brush that will give you thin lines. You might need to add a bit of water to your paint to get it to move. All right, so try to get it to move by adding water. To your brush is almost almost dripping there now so that may not work but i'm trying to get the quick strokes if i could get it to do that i'm gonna get some more paint takes a little patience but lots lots of water without it dripping don't let it drip but the water also spreads the paint which means that it might make them too thick. See how they're coming out thick? I'm getting some. But I just want to show you that, you know, it takes, <laughs> takes patience. If I mess it up, I'll just put some more darks back there, okay? I'll also try another brush now in a minute. This brush doesn't seem to like me. See? See, I get some nice ones there. See how nice they are, but it won't always work. I'm, out of curiosity, I'm just going to try a smaller round brush. All right, Let's see if I can get the smaller round brush to do something for me. Don't think this one's going to work because it's got a big tip on it. So I'll try it anyway, just to see. Bad, not bad. Still a bit thick. not bad so try different brushes see if you can find the one that works for you you might have to practice on a separate sheet of paper or something so you don't want to spoil your painting right so anytime you're doing your paintings or you're not sure about something try it on a different piece of paper I'm gonna add more white to this there we go Now 
Now, I just want to get so much done at first. I'm not too worried. I don't like that going in there like that. But um, I'm not too worried what it looks like at this stage. I'd like to get it better. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to go with pure white this time. And I'm going to try my, my brush. So what I'm going to do is let that dry. And then I'm going to try and get some nice thin lines over that. It's not working. It, it's not bad, you know. Um, but I'd rather use a nice long liner brush. I find that works better. So I'm going to take some white and on my brush, I'm going to highlight the ones that I already did with my long liner brush. So like I said, try different brushes because they don't always cooperate. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as the reference photo because you may not be able to do it. You may not be able to get exactly the same. But, you know, you can get as close to as you want. I'm just trying to show you the different techniques you can use. Okay, that's, that's okay for now. I'm going to leave that for now. And then I'm going to try the other ear. And, uh, and then I can... Because we want to get something started, so... Follow the uh, the direction of the fur, and because you want to get something started, and then at the end of it all, you go back and you redo the areas that need extra work, like these areas here. Okay. So use water to help it move. You can add a little bit of. The grays and the browns, or the, ground, uh, the grayish blue color, and then you can highlight it with white. All right? So I might come back in this way. Whatever way you can. Some white. So make them swirly, you know, make them swirly. Just keep doing that until you get what you're looking for. And we will come back and make and add white to highlight them. We'll let them dry and then we'll come back and add touch up, do touch ups. Okay. So now we are going to, so here I'm going to give it the bluish grayish um, shadowy color so that we can add our highlights on top of it. So just mix the same color as we did before. The uh, black and white and a little bit of blue. So you can use that. Lots of white. Because we don't want a like, really, really heavy dark gray. That's probably okay. I don't know. Do you... Depends on what you, what you want yourself. So this part here is pretty bright, okay? So we won't touch that there. But everything else has this dark, shadowy color. So we get that done. So in order to, to show 
light colors, we have to have some kind of a shadowy background. Even if you're trying to paint just white, you need something behind grayish, bluish color in order to bring out that white. Under the eye. So watch your reference photo. Painting along with me is fine, but you really still need to look at that reference photo to help you get it the way you want to, because you might want darker shadows. You know, you don't have to go exactly what I'm doing because you might have your own ideas. And if even if you're a beginner, the thing about being a beginner, which I was, I tried to be doing exactly the same as what I was following or what was in a book or what was on a video. And I get so frustrated because I'm like, how come I can't get it exactly like that? But I realized after a few years of painting that, you know what? I'm just going to use the reference photos as for reference, reference videos for reference. And that way I can do my own thing. But you you do know that you're going to need a shadow here. But if you want your shadow darker, you can do that. Or if you want it more gray, you can do that. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Just want you to know, I try to explain it all the time, no matter what you're painting. Try not to worry about it being exactly like whoever you're following or whatever you're looking at. If you're looking at a reference photo or because I know I went through many frustrations trying to get it exactly the same as what I was looking at the reference photo. Now it's good to try to get as close as you want to just for practice, um, for learning to be observant and all that good stuff. But not to the point where you're so frustrated that you don't feel like you're getting good painting just because you didn't get exactly the same as the reference photo. You want to do your own thing. You want to be more original, you know? I'm just going to get a bit of fur coming out here. Yeah, you, you want to do your own thing. Let's see what we got here. We got some coming out here on the edges too. So we'll need some shadow there to bring out some of these. He's got fur on the edges here. I don't know if it's a male or female, but we'll say. You notice when you don't know some an animal or it's a, a male or female, it's like you just automatically say he. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it. It makes it easier. Think on he or she. You just have to communicate what you can. All right, so that's that area here. That's that's kind of dark, so I might add a little more burnt umber to that, and a little black. That and that. This should come together with the black. I don't know why I did it that way. It looks like it needs to come together here like that. I missed it. I think I did. I'm just trying to look at my reference folder, make sure I'm doing this correctly. All right. And you bring these little lines out at the end. See how it looks like fur when you do that? I'm just using chisel edge, my flat brush, to get that little bit of fur going on there. Now, I went from light to dark, so my brush, it's okay for my brush to be dirty, all right? So down here, we got more stone. Clean my brush really good this time, because I put black on it. You change brushes, or you just clean it. And I want to put some more shadow down here put your shadows on you 
put the shadows on. See? Shadow, shadow. There we go. Good. Now, this is going to be shadow too, but a bit lighter, I think. Try the tongue. So the tongue is kind of a red, got a little bit of blue added to it. I'm just going to see if I can come up with that color. Maybe a little bit of blue, kind of kind of purplish like that. Let's see. Let's put that on anyway. Well, that's nice. That matches it pretty good, doesn't it? So it's red, a little bit of blue. Darken your blue red up a little bit, okay? All right, let's do that. Using a round brush, but a flat brush would be better. Try a round, all right? Like I, I keep saying, try different brushes. Try different brushes, but I like this kind of where it goes around that tongue, so I try not to go outside that tongue, so I can put up. The round brush might be a little tricky, so just try to get that to go around that tongue. And if you're nervous about it, just put a bit of tape around it, something to tape it off so you don't go over into the other area. And if you do go over the other area, we can paint over it again with some shadow color. We'll try to make it so that we don't have a lot of extra work to do. So the less mistakes, or I don't know what you want to call them, not mistakes, but little hazards, <laughs> then the better because you can get through your painting faster without being, because you make all these little tiny things, it gets annoying after a while, you know, just simple things like going outside the line and, and then you got to go back over it again and, See, when you're painting, you're anxious to get it done. You want to see what it's going to look like. If it gets too frustrating, take a break. Come back to it when you're refreshed. That's what I do sometimes. You know? Oh, we're getting there. As I'm doing this, I notice the dark. I need to put black in those corners there. I would suggest that you sit down and do this. I'm standing and it's a little harder. So I would suggest that you sit down at a table, your painting table, and do this. Because there's a lot of tiny, like when I'm doing landscapes, it's just tap, 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 tap. But when you're doing something like this, it's very tedious. You have to be very careful. Have a steady hand. And we got it, we got it, we got it. Yay, there we go. <laughs> Stop licking your tongue out at me. That's a rude dog, isn't he? A rude dog. So I'm going to take a small round brush and get those little corners that I noticed that need to be done. Small round. All right, so the smaller the area, the smaller the brush. So get your black, put it at the tip of your brush so you don't have too much paint. So because these are very tiny areas, you don't want a big blob of paint. You want to be able to work with a little bit of paint. There we go. Now that goes right up around that little edge there. So let's be, let's try it. See if we can do this without getting in trouble. Not bad. So like I said, sit down and do this because it'll be much easier for you. So I made a little bit of a mess there. I don't want to go around that corner too much. Um, I'll see after what I'm going to do with it. 
you're not sure about something, leave it till a little later in your painting. Okay, I made up a little, I made a little mess here. So I'll fix it up when I, when I do the shadows again. <laughs> a little bit of a mess there. All right, let's see what we can do. So I want to do another shadow color on the nose around this area. I'll do it a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. I'm just adding a tiny bit of blue to my white. And so that's lighter than, than the rest there, right? But we gotta have something there. You see, I'm, I'm going into the black a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that. All right. Down around here starts to get darker. Add a little bit of my black so that I can darken it up down here. Uh, let's see, let's see. Maybe I'll just add a shadow. Okay, we get a little darker down here. There we go, and there was a little, I'm gonna use a bit of burnt umber and some white. There was a little piece down here, underneath that there, it was like, I think I lost it, but I'm gonna put a little bit of brown here, just for now. And then it looks like I'm going to need to put black on my brush. So clean off your brush and put some black on the chiseled edge chiseled edge so that you can get here above the tongue kind of like a shadow there just touch it if you have to okay that's better not bad 